Welcome to the opening show of Series 7 of Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today we're floating the Kettle River in South Central British Columbia. This freestone stream has over 50 miles of fishable water and a lot of it is right by Highway Number 3. But the best way to approach it is by drifting and our outcast pontoon boats are the perfect vehicle. The kettle is known for its abundance of species, but today it's rainbows we're after. So join us as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Well, let's try out the hopper here. Right up in the run one, put a downstream end in it because the way the current's pushing it, get a longer float that way. But the water's pretty shallow, I'm not sure they're sitting there. Probably more so down a little bit further. Wow! <laughs> we had to hit dry? Yeah. And then we decided to put on the woolly bugger. Unreal. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, we just saw a fish rising too for us. We're thinking mayflies might be coming off too, but you know, this river traditionally, we come over here and we always think we want to fish dry fly. Yeah. Because we always, that's what we want to do. Well, hoppers, I mean, the big grassy banks, hoppers all the way. Because you like to see the takes, but when you catch fish like that, wow. Oh, this is a beauty. On the woolly bugger. Yeah. Unreal. Went down a little deeper, decided to get down a bit. Because there are big fish in here. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's a dandy. Oh, yeah. huh. <laughs> that's a good start. That's a pretty fish. Oh, boy. Boy, it's tough. Can't quite get him in here. See if I can get him up. Look at that. This is an eight weight rod, and he's got this baby just bent right over. Oh, this is a pretty fish. That's excellent. What a that's, start. That's a beauty. Well, we came oh. over, we just wanted to fish the kettle, and we weren't sure how we were going to fish it. And look at that, he's a cut bow. See the a cuts? Hybrid. He's got some cuts on him. We're using barbless hooks only in here. Slips right out. There he is. That is a nice fish. Nice rainbow. Real pretty colors. Oh, okay. Try to get him going. He needs a little reviving. In this water, we were over here about a month ago. Oh, there he goes. We were over here about a month ago, and the water was, we measured the water, it was 16 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm water. That's in the 60s, high 60s, for, uh, for the Fahrenheit scale. Fish weren't moving, a little active on top with the grasshoppers, but now the water, I put my hands in there, and it's freezing cold. Which is good. It's, it's numbing, so I think it's really good. It's early October. Great time to fish rivers. You get the good action on the woolly buggers. If you're lucky enough, it's a warm day like today. Warms up a little bit. We'll get the hoppers going, maybe some dry fly. Yeah. Could be a good day. Yeah. That was second cast. Well, I'm not sure what to do here. If I should go <laughs> put a mayfly on or a... Well, those guys were rising in that little pocket there. Yeah. But I, I, had, I had one guy go after hopper, so I might have to try that for a little while. Yeah. Yeah, there's another nice run over here, isn't there? With the big deep hole with that bugger, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run her through. It, you know, it just could be that kind of day. Bugger, if you catch fish that big, I Unreal, think real eh? buggers are the way to go. Wow. Whew. Fantastic, what a great start. Stay tuned, we got some more good fishing. <laughs> Possible to switch over to wet when they're coming up and taking it right off the surface like that. Boy, he's fighting good. Oh, they're great scrappers. Well, you said it, you know, the water temperature is getting down now and they are feeding big time. So, beginning of October, once the weather changes, start to get some good frost and everything, what an excellent time to come and fish rivers like this. Not a huge fish, but oh, he's not bad at all. Hold on there, buddy. This one I hung on to. Don, uh, I kind of brought him up to the surface for him going through that big run back there with the, uh, the hopper. It seems to just bring him up. This guy was able to hang on to barbel hooks. There they are, uh, what this fishery is all about. Single barbel hooks. 
There he goes. That guy's probably in the oh, good healthy 12 incher, something like that. This guy is fighting real good. Not that big, but he's a great fighting fish. Whoa. Oh, real nice, real nice. You know, that's a good combination. You go through with the dry first, pick off a couple of fish, then go down deep with the bugger following through, pick off the residual big guys. <laughs> healthy fish, another healthy fish, man. You know, we also, it was really neat. We came through, we were coming down the river and uh, right up in this really shallow spot, we saw hundreds well, probably thousands of the oh, sucker, yeah. right? Thousands of, yeah, yellow yeah. belly. The big yellow belly suckers, suckers and yeah. we don't know if they're up spawning or what, but there's just thousands of them. Marvelous hook. There he is. Oh, there he goes. Wow, easy release. into shore here. And I just happened to scoop oh, what they're feeding on. Shaking. Boy, he's taking line. He's not very big. Boy, I wish we could get a shot of that. Yeah, we'll get it. Oh, a little mayfly. I thought they're blue wing. Actually, there are some blue wing olives out because I've seen them, but that's way bigger. That's a little, uh, little light guy, a little yellow guy. Very nice. There we go. Oh, yeah. I'll just stop down here. Oh, that's a healthy fish. Oh yeah, nice. There's, and there's lots of this size feeding over there. Oh, just a ton of them. Yeah, let's just pop right out there. Back in the net so we can get a good look at them. I'm gonna show you the fly that I'm using. There he is. Another, I don't know, that's in the 12, 13 inch variety. Oh yeah. At least, but they're really fat, really thick. Real healthy fish. Really healthy fish, yeah. There oh, he goes. he just flew off my finger. Oh, did he? Yeah, there he goes. He just flew off my finger. Yeah, well that's nice good. Size. Oh, he's about a size uh, 14 to 16. Yeah. Nice I've... size mayfly. Well, you know what I did too? I mean, the water's really calm over there. So I went down to four pound test, four pound yeah. fluorocarbon, because I'm thinking it's, they're going to spook them if you put too big a, a leader on there. So I went down to four pound, and I got my little size 18 blue wing olive, CDC blue wing olive. Let me, let me show you that fly here. And then we can oh, see look at them all. There's, there's like 20 fish rising over there. Just a whole bunch of them. Well, there it is right there, made out of CDC. It's, this one's got an olive green CDC body on it. It's got the uh, blue CDC for the wing and microfibers for the tail. Size 18, worked, worked good. And Don's made his way over and you got so many fish rising over there. Right now it's gonna be fun to go over and see if you can pick the biggest one. Unreal. You know what's most important? What's that? That fly sits up high and dry. High and dry, yeah. Well, you had yours wet, you said, and they didn't take it. Yeah, it didn't take it. Oh, look at that guy, and they're still rising all around there. Really nice colors, too. Really shiny. And we are using barbell hooks as always. That just pinks out. Oh, there he's gonna go. He just wants to go. I'll let him go. I'm not a bad fish. Always remember too, when you see what's hatching on the water, they were about a size 16, and they weren't a blue wing olive, but they were a nice little yellow mayfly. Blue wing olive seems to be coming off, and they want it high and dry. They want that thing sitting right up, right on top of the water. If it's wet at all, they just don't touch it. So make sure you got some dry silica floating, especially when you're using the CDC, because the CDC, if you put on any of that gink, any of the wet silica, it'll gunk up that CDC, and then that flies at it. So if you're going to use CDC, make sure you get some dry silica floating, some shake and bake we call it, and it'll work good. Well, I'm going to get another one. Oh, well, that bigger. sounded good. Oh man, this is just, just a blast. That sounded like a nice one. Yeah, decent. All right. 
<laughs> well, you no, know, we've just been kind of following them down. I guess probably been pushing them down. I've been casting over them. And I was just beginning to think maybe I should change flies. The guy gave himself away, cast over him, came right back up for it. Oh yeah, heavier fish for sure. Oh yeah, nice fish. He doesn't want to come over here. Gee, that was a nice one, man. There he goes. Oh, he's just shaking down there. There it comes, decent fish. A couple of nice sized fish working over there. Kind of the last bunch we all caught were all uh, same size, but this guy's a little bigger. Look at how, look at how oh, fat he, he is. He too. looks nice. It's a beauty. He sounded meatier too. Yeah. All right. Oh, look at him go. All right. What do you think? Is that as big as your, uh, your first one you caught? Oh, I think that's bigger, isn't it? Uh, it's pretty big, all right. I think I had one on that was even bigger than this today. It's pretty tough to move around with your flippers on. Oh, look how healthy <laughs> that fish is. Look like the geek with the flippers. Look at oh, it. yeah, that's it. See how healthy that fish is? And you know, there's a few rising over there like that. Just on the edge of the lip. Oops. Come on to there. Right there, right on the edge. Yeah, I should just slide it up there. Yeah, marvelous. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh, see, that's a nice, healthy fish. Yeah. Oh, is there what you take the, the net for me? Come on, there. Yeah. A little float, but look oh, at that. Oh, yeah, look at that. That guy is, uh, he's probably pushing 17, 17 inches. Yeah, yeah, isn't that nice? Look at the beautiful <laughs> colors, too. What a well, gorgeous fish. I didn't think we are going to catch fish that big here today, to be honest. Well, I thought we would with the bugger. Yeah. You know, down deeper, but not dry. Not with a blue wing all of there. No way. Well, there he goes. There he goes off. Oh, right on. Excellent. Yeah, I'll say excellent. And yeah. right on top, using a size 18 blue wing all of Yeah. Our little CDC guy. Yeah, that was almost like an 1818 or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. He just you know, give himself away. Yeah. <laughs> he cast over him. And, and like I was up. saying at the start of, of the fish there, some they just weren't coming up for it. And I was just thinking, well, maybe it's time to change. But I think you just got to work it over them. Yeah. You know, get it in front of their lane where they're feeding. No, hit it. There's yeah. three or four real nice ones still working out there. Good. Why don't we go to the bench? What are you going to tie? I don't know. We've already done the uh, the CDC blue yeah. olive, but uh, we can show a different version. A little mayfly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good idea because that's what's working. Yeah. Right on. Okay. We'll go there. Good plan. Well, we'll be back after you go tie a fly. Yes. <laughs> Hi everyone, and welcome to the bench. Well, today I got a real nice pattern to show you. It's called the Olive Comparadun. Now this fly imitates mayfly duns, and by just varying the size and color, you can imitate something as small as a blue wing olive to as large as a green drake. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly. For the hook, we're gonna use a size 18 TMC 100 dry fly hook. We'll use some ADOT olive thread to tie, for the wing, we'll use some short, fine deer hair, some moose mane tips for the tail, and some olive CDC fibers for the body and head. So we're gonna start off by tying on a nice base of thread onto our hook, and tie that back and lay that down. That helps the, to stop the wing and the tail from slipping. So what I've done is stack some deer hair. I've got my real short, fine deer hair. I'm gonna measure it up the length of the hook and then move that forward to get my wing size. And I'm just gonna dig a few loose wraps and then tighten it up. And tie back. What we're gonna do with this wing is I'll show you a little trick in the next stage. But we'll just make sure we get this all nice and secured down first. Now that I have the wing tied in, it's all pointed forward. You'll notice your deer hair all points forward. The little trick is to pull back about a third of your deer hair and take a couple of wraps around that deer hair. Again, and just progress up. Take another third of your deer hair, take a couple of wraps around it, and take your final little bit of deer hair, and take some more wraps around that. This way, that'll keep that deer hair standing up real nice for you. Now what I've done is taken about four or five moose mane tips, and just the very tips, and I'm gonna tie them in for the tail. You don't want too many tips at the back because the, the tails of these mayflies are quite delicate, quite small. And tie those in at the back for the tail. Now that I have my wing tied in paradun style and I've got my little moose mane tail on, we're going to cut up a bunch of CDC fibers. Now you don't want to use the stem from the CDC, you just want to take that, that one fiber 
and cut off all the little little barbulates or little fibers off that CDC feather into a tray and then we're going to dub it on the wing. So I'm just going to grab my CDC and start trimming fibers. Now that I have all the CDC feathers cut, I'm going to just take a little pinch in between my fingers, just like dubbing any other material, and start rolling it on and build up a nice dub body. And keep rolling it onto your thread until you get a nice, a nice bit of dubbing on there so using the CDC fiber. And then what we're going to do is start making the body. The CDC is wrapped onto the thread. I'm just going to rotate this around the body now, around the hook, to form the body. When I hit the wings, I'm going to pull that wing back and go in front of the wing and form a nice head right on top of the fly. And what we'll do is tie off with our whip finisher. Just trim off the Trim off the residual CDC, anything that's sticking out a little too much. And there you have it, the finished Olive Compare done. You know, we've tied this fly in a size 18 and 20 to mimic all the small little blue wing olives coming off on the Kettle River today. All you have to do with this fly is vary that size and color to match the hatches in your area. Here's a couple of gift ideas that you can think about getting the fly fisherman who thinks they have it all. Because these are products today that fly fishermen can use, but they don't always have them. And we're going to start with a flashlight. A lot of times you get into a good hatch happening just as it gets dark and you lose your fly, you have to tie one on. Well, you really need a light. And what's nice about this Zelco long reach light is you can attach it to the brim of a hat or you can actually attach it to just about anything. And you can angle it so it'll be perfect for tying on your fly. Uh, it's not really expensive and trust me if you get into a hatch at night it's definitely worth having a flashlight. Another product is how about a stream thermometer. Not many fishermen have a thermometer but if you fish the same location all the time it's nice to know what the temperature is of the water because it definitely affects the habits of the fish when they're feeding. So a good thing to have is a stream thermometer. And one more thing is a knot tire and most knot tires come with good instructions on how to tie knots because if you're going to tie a nail knot which is an excellent tool for attaching your leader to your fly line you really want to have a tool because you get a better knot and you can tie it a lot faster and if it's cold out your fingers aren't working quite right well definitely want to have a knot tire so here's some good products to put on your list to get the fly fisherman who's already got it all and if you want more information about these products and any other products we use at sport fishing on the fly make sure you check out our website <music> Okay. Look at him skying around. Oh. <laughs> oh. Unreal. Well, what a great way to end up a day. Oh, gee. No kidding. Oh. Fantastic. Wow. How big is yours? I don't know. I haven't seen him yet. He sounded big. Mine's just, I think mine's a little bit smaller. Is he? Smaller than the average fish we've been catching. Very well, active. This guy's though. not that bad, but he's nice. Whoa. Gee, sure fuck good. Oh, he's just a nice little guy. Huh. But what That's a great a good all dry fly like that. Whoa. Right in the top of the lip. Let me get this guy off. Right, right in the down. top lip. Nice fish. That's right. a good one. Yeah. Yeah, he's your normal yeah. nice size. You know, your 12 to 13 inch. They're so uh, nice little rainbow. They're they healthy. Go. They're feeding good. I guess oh. getting ready for winter. Unbelievable. Well, the big thing go. here today is we've happened to caught a nice blue wing olive hatch. I mean, we had the hoppers. Yeah. Did warm up enough. A little later on, now sun's going down. Blue wing olives are all big, and all the rainbows have slid into that nice calm water. They like something real small. And the natural's coming off for about a 20. That's a nice fish. Yeah. Oh, nice little rainbows right on the top. That's fantastic. Oh, they're coming up taking a dry, yeah? Yeah. Well, it just shows you, too. We talked about it. Just be prepared for anything when you come out fishing. Oh, yeah. We thought we were going to be fishing. Actually, we thought we were going to be fishing all wet today because we were here about a month ago, yep. and it was mostly wet fishing, and we didn't get a, a hatch at all, so we were fishing woolly buggers all day long. Well, you know, the funny thing is the hatch came on later. Remember all the mayflies? Right. Not a fish up. 
All right, this was a month ago when we were out. A month out. Yeah. ago. Yeah. Now the mayflies and blue wing olives are out. Fish are up everywhere. And what a blast! Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> you don't have to use the heavy artillery with the you know the big woolly buggers yep. to go down deep. Nice little six weight rod, little tiny eighteen on top. <laughs> I love well, it. Well, you know what I changed to? I went back to the grasshopper. Grasshopper. Grasshopper worked very good. <laughs> All right, well, you should try grasshopper fishing, and if you happen to catch a blue wing olive hatch, so much the better. Exactly, and what a great deal on the kettle. You know, they've, they've really managed it right. Barbless hooks now, yeah, fantastic. It's good. Uh, we're going to be back here for sure. We will. Yeah. yeah, well, you get a chance to come here. Make sure you take care. And conserve the waters. They've put on some great regs here, and we love it. It's fantastic. It was an awesome day of fishing was. on the oh, Kettle River. Beautiful. It was good. See you next time. Well, we'll take you sport fishing on the fly. Wow. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Marriott and their high-performance fly fishing equipment. And by Outcast, makers of the Pac-800, the best pontoon boat. And by Rio's quality fly lines, leaders, and tippets. And by Harbourcraft, with their race-inspired and quality build boats. Don and I enjoy a trip to the Elk River every year, and it's been very satisfying watching this river flourish. Despite the enormous pressure and seasonal flooding, the Elk, as you will see, is an exceptional fishery. So join us today as we take you down the Elk River on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Babies cleaned up for the, for the trip today. Clean enough yet? Oh yeah, they are <laughs> nice and clean. Hi well, everyone, welcome to today's edition of Sport Fishing on the Fly. We're at the Elk River in southeastern British Columbia, and this, I think, more than any other river in BC, is where people are coming to fish. They are. It's it's a big destination mainly because of the cutthroat, easy to catch, and a lot of fish. Well, they've managed it really well over the years too. They had the flood a few years ago. They put catch yeah. and release on after that, and now you can actually keep one fish. Yeah, which is good. I think you should uh, have a, a catch fishery because yep. it allows some fish to be taken out and some new ones to get bigger. But with the catch and release and the barbless hooks, it's just made it great. It is single barbless hook for sure. Yep. You can't have a barb on your hook, so yep. make sure you pinch them down exactly. when you come here. But you know what's interesting is you were here last year. Yeah. And when you guys put in, there were 12 drift boats going down. A lot. So it gets a lot of pressure. But you know what's sustaining it? Because we've heard this year that there's a 23-inch cutthroat That's that was caught cut. and released, which is big. Yeah. So you got the quality, you got the quantity. Yeah. It's great. And that's solved by due to management. They've managed it properly. And that's, it really comes down to catch and release, barbless hooks, you know, the fly fishing. Yeah. You're going to lose one in 100, and that's, that's the rate, which is pretty low. We got West Slope Cutthroat today, so we got the good yeah. dry fly. But we also got dollies that we're going to try for when we get down to some of the bigger pools. The big artillery. We've got six inch flies that we're going to be casting for the big dollies. Same ones we tied in our video mag. That's right. A while ago. Yeah, we'll give them a try. Yeah. <laughs> So it should be a good day. We're just waiting for a little bit of heat to turn on here to bring the fish up, yeah. get them looking up. It should, should be, be a good day. Nothing yet. Don's still got the trude on. I switched over to a caddis fly. Well, there's nothing moving yet. But it's an awful nice day to be out on the water. And you know with cutthroats, it's only a matter of time. All right, well, here we go. Here's how we're starting things out today. It oh, just it's like took, a nice one? Took a little bit of time. Well, you know, we, we both had the Royal Trude on, or the cutthroat candy. You might have seen it on one of our other bench segments. Cutthroat candy's been known to be deadly. But it's just a matter of time before they come up. But I changed it up. I went to a caddis, I saw a caddis. Oh, that's a beauty. This is a nice fish, yeah. I put on a, a CDC caddis, actually. Oh, look at how fat this oh, guy is. Oh, wow. Oh, what a way to start it off. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna slide out around over here, I think. Get a little closer. Right in the net. Okay. So, get rid of the rod. What 
what a healthy fish. Oh, just gorgeous. Fly out. I wait to see this beautiful cutthroat. Look at how fat that is. That is, that's amazing how fat he is. Let me get a better look at him that way for, for how fat he is. We're going to get him back in the water here. He's just going to swim off nice and slow. Back to feed again. 40 degree water right now. Man, you don't want them to revive too long. Make sure they're ready to go. So what I did is I switched over to the caddis fly. Saw one fish rising along there. And I'm not sure if this was the same guy or not. Just cast in there and he came up. So I think what we're going to do right now, we're going to put the pontoon boats ashore. We're going to fish this whole run up here. And I think that was the first fish we saw rise. So as the day goes on now, we should see more rising fish. All righty, just come to a real nice bank here. Now this is what we look for. This is classic cutthroat water. Got the head end of the run, flows down and it just gets into that five foot, four foot, five foot depth all along this bank. And that's where those big guys love it. There's just enough flow to go through to keep them nice and steady. And the feed all just drifts right into this bank. And that's what you're looking for, where all the feed's gonna go. So how we're gonna proceed again is the bottom of the, bottom of the run. You're gonna start working this probably inside out and just keep working all the way up the run. It should, uh, there should be fish sitting here all the way out into the, to the middle of the run. So we'll just start off by casting a few short ones and see if there's anything. We haven't seen too many fish working, seen a few out in the foam line, but the bigger guys are gonna be sitting near the edge here, so we'll try a couple in close here first. See if anything's there. And again, we've got the cutthroat candy on. This is a traditionally a really good cutthroat fly. If we see a hatch coming off, I'll change, but right now it's fairly early. It's a good attractor pattern to start with. And again, look for structure in the water. I see a few boulders out there a little further out, and I'm eventually going to get there, but I want to just start in close first, see if there's anything tight. Well, I've taken a few casts in tight, and I didn't pull anything out of there right here, so what I'm going to do is walk a few steps forward and get out to that foam line a bit and keep working my all the way up, just zigzag right up the hole until we get into some fish. And I just saw another one out in that foam line and eventually we are going to have to get out to that foam line. All right, one more up in this bank since I moved up. The neat thing about this fly too, the retrieve, since it has the rubber legs, you can give it a little motion here and there. You know, just give the give your rod tip the odd flick here and there. Just get those rubber legs moving a bit. And if it skids a bit, that's fine. That's what those rubber legs are for, to give it a little motion. So, you know, got the only fish along the bank, but I'm gonna get out into that foam right now. There's that foam line. Let's see if we can get something out there. Oh, wow, <laughs> what a take. That was a tough cast out there too. What I did is I was actually, you could see the bank behind us, we'll get a shot of it for you. It's really steep, really, really steep bank and you can't get that cast. So you move downstream, make your cast parallel with the water and then in your last flick, you point your rod tip out into the current and that's where your line will go. And I got this good drift over him with a caddis and this is a beautiful cutthroat. Wow, he is nice. Nice big size. And they took the CDC caddis, like Grant was saying. Grant in his first cast with that CDC caddis, he had a hit, and bang, he got a fish. I got a good drift out there finally, and this guy came and took it. And he's a beauty. All right, I think this guy's ready. Let's just, let's get him up here. Oh, man, well, maybe he's not ready. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Put the rod down. Whoa, just in the top lip. Wow, barbless hooks just pops right out. Look at that. Now that is a fish. Open your mouth for me. Look at that. Is that a beautiful cutthroat trout? Huh, look at the pretty cuts on them. Just an absolutely phenomenal fish. Well, if you've never fished for West Slope cuts, they are just some of the best fish. Whoa, there he goes.
Oh, oh another nice fish. Oh, that's the best when you get to, to fish to him. We saw him sitting just off the edge of that rock there, and I tried so many different flies. I tried a little blue wing olive, I tried a stimulator, I tried a tom thumb, I tried a caddis fly, and I finally put on a mayfly, and it's about a size 14 to 16 parachute mayfly, and this guy finally came up and took it, and uh, I like, just, you know, if we, we could have moved on, and we thought about moving on, but I saw this guy there, and I just had the patience to sit there and work it, and work it, and work it, until he finally took something. And what happened was the cast before, he actually came up and refused it because it dragged out, but I knew he came up and he had a really good look at it, and then he refused it. Wow, wow. What a fish. Ha! Huh. Another clone of the other ones. Okay, fella, come here. These fish are so fat. Just amazing how fat they are. The rod down here over the road. Look at the girth on this fish. Okay, here's the fly. I'll show you that in a second. Take a look at that fish. That is about an 18 inch cutthroat. Look at the beautiful cuts on it, the colors. Look at how fat that fish is. That is one very healthy West Slope cutthroat trout. Put up the good fights. So we're gonna just turn them a little bit here, get them out so some water will flow over his gills. And again, it's just so rewarding to, uh, to actually catch that guy. There you go, he's just gonna sit right down there and sulk. Whoa! Oh, there he goes, he's darting. Oh, well, there's a nice cutty again. Just change the fly up. We're gonna put on a real nice pattern, one of our favorites, which is a parachute Adams. Whoa! This guy is fighting tough, and I put on just a little bigger size. I got about a size 14. I think he was using a 14 too, actually. Yeah, I just put on this little, a little bit bigger, about a size 14, parachute atoms. Whoa. And we were fishing this bank pretty hard behind us. And we just decided to move out, so I rode back up, and I saw some fish rising on the other bank. So I slid over, and put it out there, and I got this guy. Gee, they are healthy fish. Wow. They're just extra fat now. I just got to clip on my net here so I don't lose it. And let's show everybody this guy. As always, barbless hooks should just pop out of this. This guy just right in the corner of the lip. Clear the line. Try to turn him upside down. Get him disorientated, and there he is. That is a nice fish, isn't it? Look at how pretty that is. That's a good 17, 18 inch fish. Beauty, just a beautiful fish. And we'll get him going here again. And he wants to go. There he goes. Goes to sulk on the bottom. Wow, <laughs> just a great day. Again, just stay and work the banks. Like, we've worked this one bank pretty hard, but there are a lot of fish there. And it really showed when Grant went through and showed you how many different flies he went to catch that one fish. I mean, he went through a handful of flies just to catch that one fish. So if one fly isn't working, switch it up, because if you know the fish are there, they're gonna eventually take it. This week on the bench, we're gonna tie you up the parachute atoms. Now the Parachute Adams is probably the best overall mayfly pattern you're ever going to use. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a TMC 100 size 14. We'll use some black UTC 70 thread to tie with, some short fine deer hair for the tail, some hare's ear dubbing for the body, some white calf tail for the wing, and a grizzly hackle for the hackle. I've stacked some of my short fine deer hair and we're going to measure it up and I don't like it, the tail too long, just about as long as the hook. That's about as far as you want to go, just as long as the hook, measure it back and tie it in for the tail. After I've tied the tail in, I've actually moved my thread up to about three quarters of the way up the hook towards the eyelet. Now I've taken some white calf tail and we're just going to tie in a nice wing here, a nice wing stem that we'll actually use to parachute after. When I'm tying in my wing, 
I also like to go around the base of the wing quite a few times, at least six or seven wraps around the base and that really allows that wing to sit real nice and upright for parachuting. I've moved my thread to the back of the hook, just in front of the tail, and now we're actually going to put on our hair's ear dubbing and just dub all in a body. And we definitely want to taper the body, keeping it thin at the back and taper it towards the front. So we'll just dub on right now. Now I'm going to wrap it forward and taper the body. Wrap it right up to the wing. Now that I have the body tied in, I'm going to take a grizzly hackle and tie it in where the body ended. And we're just going to wrap it around our wing that we just formed and form a nice parachute hackle on the fly. Now to finish the fly off, I'm going to take some more hair's ear dubbing and I'm going to dub it on just a little bit thicker. And we're just going to wrap it around the front of the fly to form the head. A couple times behind the hackle we just tied in just to fill in the body and then around the front to form the head on the fly. And there it is, the finished parachute atoms. You know, as I said in the intro, this is the most versatile mayfly imitation you're ever going to use. Always make sure you have some in your fly box. Oh, All right. Nice fish out in the trees. Yeah. Now here, here's really good to look at. You can see how the fallen trees, if you pan up there right now, you can see those trees in the background. And right in between, there's a real nice slack spot of water. Granny, I made the cast in there. Didn't get any hits. You followed me exactly. Put the cast in perfect, bang, and you got this guy. Actually, you know what? I missed the first guy. Oh, did you? I missed the first guy. Put it back <laughs> in there again, and this guy came up and took it, and then I had to pull like heck oh, to get him away because the tree's right in the water. But that is prime location. Coming down through a run, the trees have fallen right where the fish stack up. That gives them a little break water, and it's perfect. Yeah. They're just sitting there. Oh. oh, man, there he goes. And a really good thing, too, is to bring the, try to get to shore as much as you can, and obviously over in the slack water, because that's where you want to be. Boy, he's really splashing there, isn't he? He's working the top pretty hard. He's working hard. That's, you know, another good point too, I don't know if you touched on it earlier, is with the guides. There's lots of guide boats out as well. Yeah. And most of the guide boats are really good. If they see you working a stretch of water, they're going to leave you alone and let you work it. There's the odd guide that's probably not as, you know, has the same etiquette as everybody else. But same That's, with you, yeah. if you're working the river, if you come down and there's a guide there, yeah. well, you just let them have that run and you just have to go into the next one. Yeah, and always move. If they're working one side of the pocket, move around them. Don't go zipping through the pocket. Make sure you, you use etiquette, proper okay. river etiquette, and that's just getting out of their way. And usually you do. If they're fishing a stretcher run, they're going to work it. you got to let them have that run. And the elk Man. is getting busier, like we said in the intro. It's a pretty busy river. We've had about five or six boats go by us, but Everybody is catching fish like this. Everybody's oh. having a good time. And there he goes. Just like that. He took my fly. Oh, and he took your fly. You know what? That was my last one, too. Oh, <laughs> no. That's always a favorite. Isn't that always uh, a favorite? Why don't you say, why didn't you use the net? You use know what? Net. Why don't you use the net? Oh, what a bonehead. <laughs> anyway. That was a good fish, though. That was a beauty. I'm sure we got some underwater footage of that. Yep. Everybody got to see him, and it was. That was a, oh, that that was a healthy fish, fish yeah. Go on. Oh yeah. Come on boys. Oh, he's healthy. Wow, I just slid up into the hole where ground was working and Granny just had the huge one come up. The big guy. He tried <laughs> to muscle him across set. on the, see a big stump out there. He tried to muscle him across, but uh, he just snapped him off and that was a big fish. Wow. This guy's nice. He's, he's fighting good. I think he might be ready to come in. Here he comes. Boy, just in the top. Oh, nice lip. fish. Oh, another nice fish. They're all big. Can't really do a whole bunch of kneeling down here because I'm in such a bad angle. But I'll just take this guy, put him upside down, barbless hook, just pops right out. And there he is. is that a beauty? Look at that. Oh, geez, look at the colors. Oh, and there he goes. He just wants to go. <laughs> that looks like it, Andy. Oh yeah, this is a good fish for sure. Very healthy Aww. fish. Oh, you know what? Every fish we caught today, all real nice fish. Yeah, it's amazing. Well, I wasn't ready for that today. No. I wasn't. I, I thought we were going to get some smaller ones. Well, we did get the odd small one, and we, you know, we could have showed a, a few of the smaller ones we got. 
But you just like to get them in quick and unhook them. Yeah. And the big guys you can't, so they're just they're perfect to show. But the yep. little guys were nice. Guess now, what I got them on. Guess what you're going to use, though? Oh, yeah, we're going to use the net this yeah, time. Yeah, you're going to use the net. Oh, you cutthroat candy. Yeah, you betcha. You got them on the candy. Well, you know what I, I saw tonight was there was a lot of... Uh, he doesn't like Case this net. pops off. He's just barely hooked in the oh, lip. and there he goes. Oh, he just got off. He just got off just like that. Yeah, I could see that too. It was just, just barely in the hooked. corner. I couldn't reach him. Hooked. He didn't like the net. That was nice and that, fat. Though. I thought it might have been maybe the biggest of the day. I don't wow. know. Wow. No, that just was good. all nice. They're fish. all the same. We're all 17, 18 inches, very healthy, very big. And yeah, the cutthroat candy, we tied them up last night, sitting in the hotel room. Yeah. You thought they were going to work. And the reason I went back to it is because there's lots of October caddis coming off right now. Yep. And there's some bigger mayflies. So I'll put something bigger on to track them up. Plus, it's a little whiter. You know, it's getting a little near dark. With yeah. time, we're almost down to the end of the float. Yeah, that's but it's been a real good day today. Really enjoyable. Most enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. I didn't know what to expect, but the size of the fish is just—it's amazing. This Elk River is incredible. It's, it's withstanding all the pressure that it's getting. Yeah. And then some. Yeah, and it's it's managed right though. That's yeah. the big key. You know, we passed a lot of boats on the way down, and it's just managed good. Yeah. We've got the big fish now. The guys are just catch and release, and that's all it's all about. We said at the onset this is one of the favorite, or maybe even the favorite, destination rivers yeah. in all of BC. Mm -hmm. Well, you should put it on your calendar, too, because it is amazing. Yeah. When you get here, though, make sure you take care. And conserve the waters, follow the regs they've got here, and you're going to have a great day of fishing. Very enjoyable. <laughs> we definitely have an enjoyable <laughs> well, yeah. day. See you next time. When well, we take you sport fishing on the fly. Wow, that was a nice one too. <laughs> wow. Another dandy. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Marriott and their high performance fly fishing equipment. And by Outcast, makers of the Pac 800, the best pontoon boat. And by Rio's quality fly lines, leaders, and tippets. And by Harbourcraft, with their race inspired and quality built boats. The East Kootenai region of British Columbia has some of the best fly fishing opportunities in the world due to its prolific lakes and beautifully scenic rivers. We're on a tributary to the Elk River near Fernie, and we're after the prettiest fish there is, wild native West Slope cutthroat trout. You can only access the best parts of this stream by 4x4, but it makes for a very scenic ride in. It's mid-August, and the weather couldn't be nicer. So join us today on a tributary stream of the Elk River as we take you sport fishing on the fly. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Sport Fishing on the Fly and today I got the pleasure of fishing with Kelly Latch again. Kelly, thanks for joining me today. It's my pleasure. Yeah, Thank Dawn's you. away, so we get a chance to go after some big cutthroats today. Yes, we do. Uh, it's been a long time we've wanted to help you and put this show together for yep. a long, long time. We're, yep. we're fishing in one of the tributaries of the Elk River, and uh, it's got some of the biggest West Slope cutthroats that we know of that exist. One of the pure strain of West Slope cutthroat as well. Exactly. Really beautiful fish. I mean, we say that about every fish we ever catch, but I mean, these truly are the prettiest of all fish. And they're wild and native, and that's what's really special about them. For them to be the size they are, and at the same time, never, never having any stocking program, never having yeah. anything like that, is really special. Well, they've done the regulations, and I don't know, maybe showed you some of the shots of us trying to get in here. There's a couple of big mud holes. It's not easy for anybody to get in no, here. And we've walked a long way up here too today. The average person would not want to come <laughs> up here. Yeah. That's true, and it's uh, it's something we don't do very often, and it's a it's a real treat to have you guys up here. Oh, it's just a special place, and the size of the fish. We're not just talking about length. They're pretty good length, but the girth of the fish is what's real Staggering. important here. It's yeah. the only thing to describe it. Yeah. Well, there's a neat little tree right over there. I bet there's a fish hiding underneath that. I think you're right. Maybe an ant or a beetle or something like that? or Something like that. Even a little uh, gray mayfly pattern probably works pretty good up here. Yeah. Why don't you give that a try? Well, you got with. the local knowledge, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's go give it a go. All right. <laughs> well, here's a start. Just a good little start. Little guy for here. Ooh, freight train power, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. Heading right back up there. Guy. What a beautiful river we got here fishing. Isn't that gorgeous yeah. here? Oh yeah. He's just one of the babies here. 
little football baby. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, you. So what'd you put on here? What'd you get me to use here? We today? have a little gray wolf on right now, and it's a, it's a very effective pattern. One thing I want you to notice is the girth Look how fat of this bitch is. Yeah, I want you to look at the girth of these fish. And this oh small system, this, uh, this little tributary of the elk is pretty famous for its very, very, very large cutthroats. Whoa, look. Look at how fat that is. <laughs> These are much over 12 inches and he's pretty heavy. Uh, off he goes. Isn't that something? Unbelievable. <laughs> I can't believe how fat that is. <laughs> That's unreal. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, yeah, they just get bigger from there. <laughs> so we'll, that's a pretty small fish for here. Okay. Straight up. Get out after you run that short water, give a couple casts out a little further. Okay. For them. Remember, Granny, we don't get a lot of chances at this place. Okay. Sometimes it's only five to fifteen fish max, eh? So okay. what you gotta do is every time you put it in the water, expect a fish. <laughs> yeah, they're big. Did you see the size of that? Oh yeah, he's big. Uh, I don't think landing him here is an option. No, I don't think so. I think, he's I gonna... think it's down river is the option. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, these are big fish. Did you see the size oh. of that, Toad? They're, they're so thick. Oh. I mean, they're, they're thicker in my hand. There's a good look at him there, maybe coming up. Oh, he's shocking. Just watch out for that root ball. You might want to try and walk down and try and keep him out of that root ball if you can. You may not have a choice here, but. Oh, yeah. What a fish. <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow. Oh, we're just making our way up. We were making our way up. Yeah, let's head down and now we're going down. Let's go downstream and see if we can handle him down here a ways. I mean, you only got into a, a pretty tough casting situation up there where the we'll show you in a minute. It was it was tough to get a Very, drift very on. tough. <laughs> there he goes. Look at him go. Look at the size of him. <laughs> Holy cow. I'm not sure that he's he's finished running yet. Oh, West Slope cutthroats. You don't get to fight like a rainbow. You know, rainbow, he'll take off and he'll jump and scream. These things are just like, I don't know, bulldogs. They just sit there and, and blow their way down. Oh. He's not going to let you get away with that easy either, bud. Uh, not yet. Yeah, we're still going downhill. Uh, yeah. This is what everybody comes to these small streams for, you know, as an opportunity. Not necessary to catch one, but at least an opportunity to hook one of these giant cutthroats. A, a big know? guy like this. Well, you know what's neat too about this this stream is it's just so clear. Call it gin clear, I guess that's the term everybody uses. Yeah. And just walk the tip of your rod into the shore and he'll come right in. Okay. Yeah. That's in the theory part of it. <laughs> oh, that's theory. <laughs> Here oh, he right on the end of the nose. Oh, I know, no. not a lot there. Come on, you big guy. Coming right in at you. Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, wow, excellent. That net is uh, is made for 20 inches. It's 20 inches. Yeah, in that isn't a 20 inch cut, but the girth is something to behold. West Slope cutthroats genetically really don't get that big. No. 20 inches is considered the oh. top of their range, right? Yeah. So, so for him to be anything even close is is good. Can you get that, Granny? I can't hold the net at the same time and then do it. There we go. Pop that okay. out of there. Let's Stick it in here. Let's get a good look at that. I mean, that's just a gorgeous fish. It's absolutely gorgeous. Here, I got the net. Got the net? Yeah, you can handle All the right, fish. All right, hold on. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that, that staggering? Is so the girth, so pretty, so pretty. He's truly beautiful. It is. That's Look what we came for. Me. Now, in this this particular tributary we're in, these are one of the the most natural strain of West Slope cutthroat that are left, right? Absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's only a few streams that have genetically pure cutthroats like this. Yeah. Get the sun on. Get some nice colors on them. And oh, it's gorgeous. 
There we go. He's just going to sit there and revive. Wow. <laughs> Unreal. Isn't that something? Absolutely what we came for. <laughs> Fantastic. Way to go, Granny. Good cast. Great job. Tough. Really tough lie. Well, that's tough. We should get a, a shot of it because the fish was sitting just on the other side and the water was coming very strong in towards us. What we should have done was come down here and cross and, and presented the fly. From Probably here. would have been the better call, yeah. but you still managed to make a great cast on him and catch yeah, him. Yeah, so got it in there. So right on. Good job. Let's see if we can get this guy going. You know what I'm, I'm fishing with today? I've got a, a four weight rod. It's an eight and a half foot four weight Marriott rod. And it's just about perfect for this. You don't have to make the long cast. Although if I had to, I could probably push this one out of the ways. And the eight and a half foot length gives me good line control when I need it. And you get the good feel for the fish. Let's see if I can pull this guy down here. A little bit calmer. A little bit smaller than the last one, but these guys are just so girthy. Hey, there's just a beautiful fish here. Bill Hamlin gave us this net here to, to try out and see how we like it. What's your thoughts on the net? Oh, it looks like a fantastic net. As a guide, to me, this looks like the way to catch a fish because it's so big, that it, but it cradles the fish so beautifully. It does a wonderful job of doing that. Yeah. Let you get that fly out of there, Danny, if you can. Just on the side there. Okay. Well, why don't you uh, sure. hold him up? He's probably right. going to be explosive. He's so. going to be ready to roll right away, yeah. I think, yeah. Good hands wet, good hands are wet. Yeah, uh, he's... Hold it up and let him have a look. There we go. Look how Put fat right that is. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, that is just one fat fish. That's as fat as my head. It's gonna go away, there he goes, right on. Yeah, if you're interested in a net like this, I know Bill Hamlin from Trail is, he's making them for us and uh, he just gave us this one to try out. So check out our website at www.sfotf for sportfishingonthefly.com and uh, more information about it there. Oh, that's a big fish. Boy, did you see that soft sip? Did you see that sip? Or you know I tried to run the other camera here to get the take and no I didn't. That is a big fish. That is truly a big Wow, I couldn't even move him. Uh, you're not gonna want him to go down too far here. Oh or you're going to be going a long way. We got trouble. Okay. Help me. <laughs> Come off Help of there. Help me. <laughs> Bye, Granny. <laughs> Pull from the bottom end of it. You can't go to the top. <laughs> well, at least it's going to get calmer down here. <laughs> Can you believe that? He just hates that net, man. He does not want it. He is way too strong okay, for this. Okay, no, there you go. There you All go. All right. All right, go get him. I'll get his head up again. There, just lift him. There he is, cradled, perfect. <laughs> well, that was a good run, you got your workout. Unbelievable, now that is a West Slope cutthroat. Let me oh. pop the nose out here. If you lift it up, let me just take the fly out. Oh, he's been caught a couple times. Where'd you take it? I don't know, he ate it. I'm gonna have to go upside down here. Well, that was a pretty good run. You don't expect I need my hemostats. Have to do that when you get a cutthroat. Well, unfortunately, when a cutthroat weighs three pounds, <laughs> the game gets a little more interesting, of course. But for all intents and purposes, you're right. Let's try and revive him a little. There, he looks good now. Yeah, he looks good. Okay, Why don't we see. hold him up here, and I'll grab the net, and you can hold him up, okay? Like so. Okay. There we go. That is the trophy, West That's Slope Cutthroat. That's trophy, yeah. You bet. Isn't that something? Unreal. Oh. And okay, I have clients good, come from all over the world oh, I bet to catch do. a couple of these. I bet you do. That's good. Let him go right there. He'll be happy right there. Right there, yes, nice and calm for him. Oh, oh wow. Thanks Unreal. a lot. Boy, we have to work to get that. We did. <laughs> hey, that's what we came for. We knew we were going to get a big fish sooner or later yep. today, and that's we came here. That was actually the whole premise of doing the show was to catch a big fish just like that guy right Fantastic. there. Fantastic. Right Good on. job. Thanks Good for nothing for me, buddy. <laughs> well, I finally got him for you. Wow. We had to chase a long way. What a run. Whew. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the bench. You know, the nice thing about a gray pattern is you can always modify it and make it even better. What we've done today is we've taken a traditional Royal Coachman pattern, added a white wing and some white rubber legs, and we call it cutthroat candy. 
fantastic fly for cutthroat trout. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie this fly. For the hook, we're gonna use a TMC 2302 size 12. We'll use some ADOT black thread to tie with, some golden pheasant crest for the tail, some peacock curl with red thread for the body. For the legs, we'll use some white rubber leg material. We'll use some white calf tail for the wing and a brown hackle for the hackle. We're gonna start off with the tail and I've taken a clump of my golden pheasant crest and we're just gonna tie it in for the tail. And I like to extend it back about an inch. Now the first step to tie in the body, we're gonna take some, a little bit of peacock curl and just tie it in and form our first little clump. We're just gonna wrap it forward so we get a nice little butt built up of our peacock curl. At this stage, a lot of people like to tie in some red floss. Well, I actually like to use some red thread. So what I'm gonna do is just whip finish off my black thread and snip it off and tie in some red thread and form a real nice midsection of thread. Build it up quite nice so you get a real nice bright little red section right in between. What I've done is actually whip finished off my red thread and now I've tied my black thread back on. I'm going to take two more strands of my peacock curl and tie it in and again form a nice few wraps here and build up that peacock curl. Form another segment. I've taken a clump of my white calf tail and I'm going to extend it back so it's just matching the wing so it's as long as the tail. We're going to hold it there and tie it in for the wing. I've taken a brown hackle. I like the, uh, the brown hackle. It really seems to work nice to make the legs. We're just going to wrap it in right now. I've taken some white rubber leg material now and we're going to just wrap it in, tie in a set on one side and then go to the other side and tie in another set of rubber legs. We're going to take a good set of hackle pliers and hook them on our hackle. Now what we'll do is pull those rubber legs back and take a few hackle turns around behind those legs we put in. Let them go back. Now take a few wraps in between. We would actually tied them in and then we'll pull them forward and take a few wraps on the head of the fly to form some hackles at the front of the fly. For the final step in the fly, we're going to trim our legs down. What I like to do is just pull the back legs about the length of the wing back in the fly and snip them off. And the front ones I like to be about just about a half an inch past the eyelid. Well, there it is, the finished cutthroat candy. And hey, the name says it all. Whenever you're fishing for cutthroat trout, put this fly on. Oh, come on, let's get down to a couple other holes before we're done. Uh, a few years back when I first came by, there was a. It looked like there was a uh, an elk kill, this is elk bones. Yep. Yeah. Can you tell by the size of the. Yeah. The knuckles in the, on the front leg or the knee, or actually that looks like a knuckle off the, uh, the elbow. Elbow. <laughs> yep. Wow. Of the front leg. So we're here, yeah. coyotes or wolves or something down there. Probably wolves or uh, could be a cougar. Could be a grizzly. You know, yeah, well, this is the area where you get everything, isn't it? There's a lot of wild animals up here, so. You know, when we say take care at the end of the show, that's what we mean. <laughs> yeah. Go in the wild. This well, is we do have bear place. spray with us, so yeah. just in case that might happen, but I don't we're, know how much. Protection. We're making lots of noise, too, as we're walking, because we've walked right. quite a that's few That's a good today. tip for the bush. When you're coming into the bush out here, it's a really good idea to make sure that you either have something that makes a lot of noise, or if you don't have that, make a lot of noise yourself. Like, make sure when you walk through the bush that you're talking with a friend. Let people know where you are all the times. Let animals know where you are at right. all times. You don't surprise and, them. Uh, yeah. Or better yet, you bring along someone who does make a lot of noise. Well, that's me. <laughs> Perfect. Good. Let's go. <laughs> Not bad, Granny. We had uh, three strikes and finally got the fish. He rolled to it three times. We finally got him. You say that never happens. That never happens. <laughs> no? That okay. never happens up here. It's so rare. Look how Everybody fat. the size of that sunfish. <laughs> <laughs> sunfish, yeah. Well, you know what I was doing? I was just yanking it away from him way too fast. And yeah, you uh, got to let these guys take their food. He just didn't have a chance at all. Look how fat that is. That is just amazing. So you get him turned around here. There he goes. Yeah, I was just yanking it away. Didn't get a chance. That's why I kept coming up for it. I Third know, time I just great. waited and just gave the little pull. And 
Yeah, he slowed down on that last <sighs> last take, and he, yeah. he well, took it. Well, it's been a while since we caught a fish here because we had to stop and eat, of course. Well, that's true. Yeah, so okay. I was just getting a little excited. Yeah. Wow. I had to put about a 45-foot cast up there. I was just kind of waiting until you were getting ready to add some wine, and uh, just like that. <laughs> A good so fish, not big. a monster, but definitely a good one. You want to do the pretty well average here? Yeah, slide thing, down there. Yeah, a little smaller than average, I think. We've been doing pretty well. So. Oh, we came after oh, some. Oh my goodness! We came after some big fish thing. today. Huh? We came after some big fish today, and we've done not bad. Oh, what a nice fish! Let me get down below him here. That's a nice fish. Scoop them from behind. <laughs> I don't think so. There you go. Scoop them. Scoop. Guess he won't scoop. He doesn't want to scoop. There. One problem with this net is uh, here we go. Is this kind of narrow? We got him. Oh God, he's not a bad oh, fish. Oh, that is a nice fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. He's as, he's as football-y as the others. Take your run there. Okay, that'd be great. And two-hand him. Yeah, I'll just hold him here for a sec. Oh, oh, he, he wants to go and he said, he's decided he wants to turn in the net. So what'd you put on there? It's kind of I, the end of the day, so you put on a... Royal Wolf. Oh, we're starting to get a whole bunch of mayflies coming off now. Yeah, that oh. line is tight, by the way. I'm having trouble getting that out of there. There you go. There we go. Put that <laughs> Get the fly out, okay. You got okay. the net? Yeah. You got it all. I got it all. Let's okay, have a let's look have here. A, yeah, look at that guy. Okay, settle down. Settle down. Settle down. Okay, I got that. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that absolutely beautiful? Unreal. Let's see. You know what it is? It's the spots are just so well defined in these West Slope cutthroats here. Yeah. Some of the other West Slope cutthroats you go to, like you were talking earlier about them being kind of faded out, but here, they're just really pronounced. They're really awesome. What an awesome fish. Kelly, thanks a lot for filling in for Don again. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me and letting me fish. Yeah. It's not often in the middle of the season like this that I get a chance to <laughs> catch a few fish. Yeah. So it's really nice. Yeah, so you get to practice what you preach. Yeah, I guess. You know, like I gotta I gotta put or if you wanna say put your uh, put your uh, money where your mouth money is. Money where your mouth is. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good, well, you get a chance to come here, you make sure you take care. Give Kelly a call at the St. Mary Guide Service and Fly Shop, Fly Shop coming on board there too. He get you into this pristine place. You know, we drove around the last couple of days and a little mayfly landed on you. And uh, the rivers were packed, there was lots of people on them. We come up here, because it's a four wheel drive road to get here and it's tough to get in and it's just been nobody. It's been unreal. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, so take care and we'll see you next time when we take you sport fishing on the fly. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It's great. Sport Fishing on the Fly is brought to you by Marriott and their high performance fly fishing equipment. And by Outcast, makers of the Pack 800, the best pontoon boat. And by Rio's quality fly lines, leaders, and tippets. And by Harbourcraft with their race inspired and quality built boats. everyone, welcome to Sport Fishing on the Fly. Today we're going to show you a, a different way to nymph. We call it sink tip nymphing. You know, it's early spring. The run that we have in front of us here is a little bit deeper, a little bit faster water. We know the fish are sitting on the bottom because there's not a lot of dry fly action yet and that's where the fish are sitting. So what we want to be able to do is get our nymph out and down bouncing along the bottom because that's where the fish are sitting. Well, what I've got here is a 12 foot sink tip, type six sink tip. I got about two feet a liter and I got my nymph on the end of this sink tip setup. All I'm going to do is cast up, let it float through, and hopefully pick up some fish. So in today's show, we're going to show you some different techniques that you can use to try and catch these fish and hopefully detect if you are catching a fish or not, because that's, of course, the secret to it. So sink tip nymphing, that's today on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Sport Fishing on the Fly. As Grant said earlier, we're going to do a little sink tip nymphing today. Now what we do sink tip nymphing is, is very similar to using a strike indicator. A lot of times when you use a strike indicator, you're almost high sticking, which means we're going to keep the rod fairly high in the air, 
cast the line up into the run, allow your fly to swing and bounce along the bottom and actually tail out into the run. Now when you're using a strike indicator, it's different, you're casting up and you don't want any movement on that fly at all with that indicator. Whereas with sink tip nymphing, you're allowing the sink tip to go down to help sink the fly to get it on the bottom and you're actually going to be moving the fly as it bounces along. It's not actually going to be dead drifting, it's actually going to be moving slightly because you want to keep in tune with your line. You want to make sure your line is always fairly taut. So here's how it's going to look. I'm going to spool off a little bit of line. I'm just going to get my line out and all I'm going to do is, is quarter, just quarter upstream, meaning I'm just going to go about the two o'clock position upstream, allow my fly and line to sink, and now as you can see I'm just slowly moving the fly back along the bottom. Staying in tune with that rod and fly line and just allowing the fly to skip along the bottom. I'll take another cast and show everybody. So again, just almost quarter upstream slightly. Allow the fly line to get down a little bit. Keep your rod tip fairly high. And now keep your line swinging through the current. And right now that fly is bouncing along the bottom and just slowly moving in towards shore. And I'm just waiting for any stoppage in my line. If that line stops for one, hesitates for one minute, I'm going to set the hook because there's a fish on. And let's go through it once more again. Again, quarter upstream into the current. Allow the fly to get, fly to get down on the bottom with your sink tip. Now pull on your line just to get a little the slack out of the line and just allow that line to and fly to swing through the current. And that fly should be just ticking along the bottom. You should actually feel it hook up once in a while. Oh, and there was a strike too. And I wasn't quite, wasn't quite on the ball. And you should actually feel your fly or your line just pull tight once in a while. And if you do feel that, it's good. It means you're on the bottom or you're actually getting a fish. So remember, every time that you feel that line tighten, pull on that line and set the hook because the odds are you're going to have a fish on. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Another little guy. Wow, oh, nice, fat, feisty guy. Let him play himself out a little bit here. Once we get him happy and on his way, I'm going to show you how I was fishing it because, as you can see behind me here, it's a little bit slower water, so I'm down more towards the tail out of the, of the uh, pool. So fishing it a little bit different than what Don showed you how he was fishing it up in the faster water. So, Oh, this water is so cold. Springtime, there he goes, just like that. Well, we didn't get to get a, a good look at him. We saw him washing around there, which was good. And uh, of course, the barbless hook just pops right out, which is why we say use barbless hooks because it makes it easier to release the fish. Don't hurt the fish. Okay, what I'm gonna do is show you what I was doing here. Because like when Don was doing his casting up above in the faster water, he was quartering it up because the water's all pushing towards him. So he quarters the cast up gets his, his rod up nice and high so you can feel the nymph bouncing along the bottom. Well here I've got a lot of flatter water in front of me. If I quarter the line up, there's no eddy coming in, but the water is just going to sag the line down and I'm not going to be able to get a good feel for the fish on the end of my line. So what I want to do in this situation here is actually cast a little bit more, almost quarter down. I want to get a good cast out, get the line nice and tight. So what I'm doing here is just getting the cast out right out to the edge of the run there and then make sure you keep it nice and tight. And again the key is to feel that fly down to the bottom. If you feel the fly bouncing along the bottom then you know you're down where the fish are. You got a chance to pick up a fish and that's where I picked that one up. I actually cast out about another 30 feet on the cast before because they seem to be just a little bit further out. You can see it's real calm inside here and then the run is oh, hit, the, hit a rock there. The run's a little bit further out so you want to be right on the edge of that run. So I'll strip some more line off and see if we can plug another fish. Well, maybe we need to keep working our way down. It's a lot flatter water all the way through here, but last time we were out, Don was here a week ago and caught most of his fish up in the faster water. They might be sitting in the slower water right now just because of the time of day. So I think what we're gonna do is go to a break. We're gonna move ourselves down a little bit and try some of the, the tail out of this long run here. Anticipation of the first take. Yeah, well, look at this guy. This poor little fella, he's had a bobber on him and all this stuff. So what we're gonna do, bring him in, 
just a little guy. Oh. What we're gonna do is get rid of all this garbage that's on them here. Got another hook in there, we'll get rid of that. Look at there, and it's got all that mess. A oh, nice little rainbow. Nice little fella, took the nymph. Great way, again, sink tip nymphing. And there he goes. Now I'll try to get my fly to that mess. There's our little fly, Barbara's hook. Nice little, nice little guy. Now here's, here's what we have. Somebody fishing with a bobber, obviously. I don't know what kind of line this was, but obviously not very uh, foolproof to the fish. <laughs> so somebody beginning. And here we want to focus in on is a barbed hook. Now, this barbed hook, you can tell it started to rust out. It is barbed, and that's been sitting in the fish. You know, the fish was kind of crazy enough to take this in the first place, but there's a barb on here. That fish would have never gotten rid of that hook. It would have taken him weeks. He was probably going to perish, actually. He was, I don't think he was going to live through dragging all that stuff around. That's why we really stress the fact of using barbless hooks. If you have a barbless hook, if this was barbless, probably are, he would have already shaken that right away. Within probably a minute, he could have shaken this big hook because it does weigh a lot. And it could have just sat on the bottom of the river without causing that fish problem. But since it was barbed, he probably was gonna, he was probably gonna perish just because of that. So remember, if you're gonna go out, even if you are gonna use jigs and things, try to use barbless hooks. So what I'm gonna do now is take this into my truck, and go and dispose of it in the dumper somewhere. When selecting some water to work, when you're actually going to do some sink tip nymphing, the water you want to approach is the quicker water. Now, as you can see out in this flow that I'm going to approach now, it comes off some rocks, fairly shallow water, and then goes into a deeper, deeper pocket and then through the tail out. Where we're going to try to focus is in through the faster water, again into the body of the hole, and then we'll work the tail out. But where we always want to start is up in that faster water, because as the water warms up through the springtime and into summer, those fish are going to move up into that highly oxygenated water, which is in the riffle runs and the shallower water. He hammered it. <laughs> gonna get my line up here and get him in where uh, a little calmer. So this guy was uh, actually stripping in my line when he hit it, so he liked the movement. <laughs> He's skipping out of the water. Okay, let's slide him in a little tighter here. Get out of this faster water. So they just seem to be sitting down in the, the pocket a little bit more than out in the run right now. Which is good. I mean, that's why we do the technique that we do. You let it slide through, and then you strip it back like it's a woolly bugger. And that's actually when he, he took it, as opposed to taking it as a nymph tumbling down the bottom of the river. Okay. All right. A little scrapper in. That's if he wants to come and play here. Come on, let you go. Come on. Holy oh, yeah, cow, lots of life in him. Not that big. You know, of course, where we're at here, you can get some pretty big fish, but this guy's not all that big. But you can see what kind of energy he's got, and if we can ever get a chance to look at him, I don't want to touch him yet until he's stopped, then uh, you'll see the markings on him, which are really quite, quite nice for a rainbow. Okay, can you done? There, it's done. Get my hands wet. Turn them upside down. Fly pops out. There he is there. Lucy coming in for a look. <laughs> yeah. There we go. We'll get this back in the water. Won't take long, hopefully. There he goes. Right on. I'll see you. Long as my fly still here. Let me show you the fly that I'm using. Got a rubber leg stone fly there. And uh, sure, we've also been using today another fly that we've used on on the bench before. That one there, which is a box canyon Viagra, and then we've got our stone fly nymph, which we've used before too, or stone bugger we call it. Well, today in the technology, I want to show you a knot that we use a lot of the times especially when we're wet fly fishing like today our sink tip nymphing technique it's called a loop knot and why it's so good is as you can see here is the fly line isn't firmly attached to the fly so it allows the fly a little bit more natural motion it's great when you're chronomid fishing but it's also really good when you're using stone fly nymphs and buggers like this one here so let me show you how to tie it first gotta clip off the old knot and what you do first is form a loop with your line. So you just form a nice loop 
You want to have enough line at the end of your loop, what's that, about two, two and a half inches there. And then what you're going to do is put your fly on the end. So you put the fly on. Now what you're going to do is, is pull your line towards the end. And what you want to do now is go back through this loop four times. Now, everybody's got different ways of doing this. I always use my mouth to do it. So go through once and I grab it. And then what you want to do is just keep going through. You want to go through four times. It takes a little uh, practice, this method. Once you got it through, what you want to do is pull your line back down and get it to however long you want the loop to be. And that's about the length I like the loop, which is, I don't know, maybe a centimeter. So we'll go from inches to centimeters. Now, if you remember the other technology I talked about, making sure you lubricate everything, very important here again. And what you're going to do is pull on, I've got the tag end with my thumb and my forefinger. I've got my other line in my other hand, and I'm just going to pull it tight using both. So pull tight on the line, I'm going to pull tight on the tag end. Pull tight on the line, pull tight on the tag end. And that's it, that's the loop knot. Trim off the excess, and there you have it. Has a chance to dangle as much as it needs to. Now, be careful, because this knot is actually a very strong knot. So if you've got a fisherman's knot above it, or a weaker knot above it, remember, if the line's gonna break, it's gonna break at the weakest point. And this knot is a very strong knot, so you may end up losing a lot of your leader if you've tied a really good knot here and your other knots aren't as good. Anyway, let's get back to the sink tip nymphing because it's a very productive way to catch some fish. Oh, well, getting a little cooler now. They just really started to turn on. And that, oh man, this guy is a decent sized fish. Yeah, this is a nice fish. Get him in. Got my net right here. But actually, they're, we found that they weren't sitting in that real fast water. They're actually tending to sit more in this, the deeper, shallower water, or deeper, uh, slower moving water. And that's where we're getting these guys. There he is there. We'll bring them on over, give everybody a little peek. Let's put this in here. Big chunk of meat. Yeah, that was a decent sized fish, actually. They're right in the top lip. Get the hook out of here. There he is there. He's uh, I don't know how big the net is, but. I don't know, it's about 22 inch net or 23, something like that. 22, yeah, so he's like a 18 inch fish or so. Nice yeah. fish, nice and healthy. Got the good colors to him, real nice. He's gonna wanna go right away. I'll let him revive a little bit. Yeah, and he's got the nice colors. You can see the nice colors he has right there. Let's hold him up on the net for a minute. Pretty fish, real pretty fish. There he goes, right, be right between your feet. So what I'm going to do is cast a little bit of stream here again. Now I got the line laying in front of me and it's loose. So what I want to do is if I lift my rod tip up and still hang on to my line, I pick up all that slack line that's there and I can actually feel the fly again. So if I get a hit with a fish, I know I can set. So important to always have your line in control with your fly because whenever you get a hit, you got to be ready to set. 
So that's called high sticking. I've heard people have different names for it. All you're just trying to do is get that line up off the water so you make it tight between, I guess, the reel or your hand and the fly. Be ready to set on anything. Well, I guess the other thing you want to keep doing too is keep moving down. Take three or four casts in one spot, don't catch anything. Move down about five or ten feet. Keep trying it again. Another little guy. Little babies. We've been catching a lot of these little guys today. The big guys haven't quite come out and play yet, but I'll just let, let this guy go here. Just barely hooked. There he goes. I think one thing we want to touch on too is here's the recommended setup today. We're in big water, really big water, potential for some eight, nine pound fish. So we're using, we have the GL3 Lumises today, nine foot, nine inch, eight weights. The reason we like the eights is because when we're using this sink tip with the uh, with the rubber leg stoneflies and the big woolly buggers, you got to be able to set that hook. We've also done the five and six weights. We found we didn't quite get the good hook set, so gone with the eight weights because again we have the potential for the big fish. We have our nice big uh, 3.8 LX Islanders. We have the Rio Versatip line on, and what I do is I have a 200 grain shooting head, so I've got a 200 grain sink tip. I've cut the sink tip back to about 12 feet. I like this ideally about around 10 to 12 feet because it gets my fly down to that depth I'm fishing around that 8 to 10 foot mark. Gets it down there in a hurry and with our weighted fly. So again, quick setup. A-way rod, nice big reel, reel versatip line and a 200 grain sink tip even to a type 6. Works really well. That's a nice guy. Look at the colors too. Oh yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> I'll hold that for you. Thanks. Gee, you know, we still haven't got any of the real big guys yet. We've had some good hits on there. But we'll keep working it. You know, it's just the sun's come out again a bit. It's getting late. Uh, I'm liking our chances a little better now. Yeah. That's a nice fish. Nice little chromie. Little chromie, yeah. 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 Just shows you what a healthy fishery this is, though. When we're fishing out our home waters here in the Columbia. It's, it's just, you get every size. You get those guys there, you get them up to 12, 15 pounds sometimes, uh, you get everything. It's really good. And you know what's about today's show is lots of people like to dry fly, but today we're wet fly fishing. And this is the time of year when you could fish a dry fly all day long. <laughs> you go home with nothing. Or you can learn to fish the bottom of the river where the fish are sitting, and you come up with fish like that. And again, this sink tip with the so good because your dry line, it's all visual, your dry line is on top of the water. Yeah. The sink tip's under with your fly and you the whole oh, thing and see it. It's a technique, yeah, you gotta practice it. Oh, well, not a bad day. Actually, you know what? Real good day. Had the potential for the big guys, had, you know, we snapped a couple off and yeah. lost a couple, but that's, it's not always about big fish. It's not, and uh, what today was about was showing you a different way to fish, fish in the bottom of the river as opposed to the top. Sink tip nymphing, it works all times of year. It happens to be spring right now when we're fishing, but in the yeah. summertime, when it's hot and the fish aren't coming to the surface or the time of day where there's no hatch coming off, it's a great way to fish a river. Well, it's just a fact of nymphing. You know, 90% of a fish's diet is, is below surface, subsurface. So if you want to catch fish, you got to go deeper. Yeah. You bet. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. When you get a chance to get out in the wild, make sure you take care. And Conserva Waters done a great job here and everywhere we've been. It's getting better all the time. It sure is, yeah. See you next time. Well, we take you sport fishing on the fly. Sport fishing on the fly is brought to you by G. Loomis Quality Graphite Fly Rods. You'll like what you feel. And by Islander Reels. High performance, precision fly reels, Canadian made. And by Outcast, makers of the best pontoon boats. And by Hyde, made by fishermen for fishermen. And by these other fine sponsors.